Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, we're going to begin a playlist on an entire unit on exponents and scientific notation, where our first video here is powers versus exponents. Let's go ahead and clear this up. Our objectives today are that you will write expressions using integer exponents, and you will evaluate expressions involving integer exponents. And here is the question I would like you thinking about as we proceed through the video lesson. How can you write and evaluate expressions with exponents? So let's begin with understanding power and exponent and some other vocabulary words that involve this expression. So we have a to the n, that is how it's read. This expression is referred to as a power. A power is a product of repeated factors. That's what this represents. And it has two parts to it. A represents the base. The base is the common factor in the power. Then we have n. n is the exponent. The exponent tells the number of times to multiply the base by itself. So let's look at this numerical base. So we have this power right here. Let's review our three vocabulary words. We had power, exponent, and base. So in right here, when we're given this four cubed or four to the third power or four to the third, we're saying the power is four cubed. The entire numerical expression is the power. When we look at it, the three is the exponent which tells us to take our base of four and multiply it by itself three times. And our base is four. That is the factor that's going to get repeatedly multiplied. So power, exponent, base. Now let's talk about repeated factors. A power is a way to express a group of repeated factors. So think of it as a more compact or simpler way to write a long string of numbers that are repeatedly being multiplied by each other. So four cubed or four to the third is equal to, we take our base of four and it says multiply it by itself three times. Four times four times four. Three fours all being multiplied. Three fours and multiplication. So we are going to simplify it by four times four is 16, and then multiply by that third four, 16 times four is 64. So four cubed is equivalent to 64. Now let's talk about writing powers with variables or symbols. We can use powers and exponents and bases that involve letters or symbols, variables in math. So the base of the power could contain a symbol or a variable. So here are two algebraic expressions, six times six times pi times pi times pi. Pi is a symbol that represents a number. It's a non-terminating decimal, so if we wanna represent it in a compact way, we can use this symbol. Then we have variables, x times x times y times y times y. Now we're gonna write these using exponents. So we're gonna identify common factors or like factors in each expression. I have two sixes and I have three pies. So I can write this as six squared because then I have the factor six twice. And here I can put my base as pi with an exponent of three to represent the three. Now that's writing using exponents. If you're asked to simplify, six squared can be simplified because six squared is equivalent to 36. So now I have 36 pi cubed and that is in simplest form. So we could write it using exponents or we could simplify it. So you just need to pay attention to what the directions are asking you. Let's look at our second expression. Identifying that we have x times x and our common factor y, we have x being multiplied twice, so our base is x, that's our factor being repeatedly multiplied and it's happening twice and we're gonna multiply that by a base of y with an exponent of three because there are three y's. Now this is in simplest form. There is nothing else I can do to it, except we can use this, but we don't need to. There's an invisible multiplication sign here and we don't need that little multiplication dot. But this is in simplest form and also we wrote it using exponents. 
Now let's talk about the importance of parentheses, especially with a negative base. So these are two different expressions, two different numerical values, and let's show you why. This is negative 2 squared, and this is negative 2 squared. So you would say them the same way, however, we evaluate them differently. So because there are no parentheses on this one, this exponent 2 is only attached to a base of 2. This negative sign is not trapped, it's not part of the base. This actually represents negative 1 times 2 squared. So the power here is 2 squared, whereas here you can see that the base is clearly in parentheses. So this base, because there are no parentheses, it's only tied to that 2. So it's negative 1 times 2 squared. So that is negative 1, and 2 squared is 2 times 2. So when we go to evaluate, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 times that 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Now let's look at this one. We have parentheses, so whatever's in the parentheses, it has a power of 2, our exponent of 2. So negative 2 to the second, but the negative 2 base is in parentheses. So this negative sign is part of the base. So this becomes negative 2 times negative 2. And when we multiply, we get positive 4. So this expression, this power, is negative 4. This one is positive 4. So be very careful and pay attention to whether or not the base is in parentheses, because if it is not, only that numerical part is being squared. All right, now let's talk about the importance of parentheses with fractions. When you want to express a fraction with an exponent, you need to put it in parentheses. If you don't, here is what happens. This is telling you that the exponent is 2 and the base is 2, and that power is being divided by 3. So this is 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4 over 3. Over here, this is telling you that you have a base of 2 thirds, so it's 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So now we multiply the numerators and the denominators. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and we have a fraction of 4 ninths. Again, two different values. So big difference between 2 squared divided by 3 and 2 thirds squared. Now when we have parentheses and we have an algebraic expression and we have numerical values and variables, again, parentheses very important. So right here, this is our power being multiplied by 4. 4 is not part of the base. This exponent of 2 only belongs to the single value, the x. So this is really 4 times x squared, which again we talked about you don't need that multiplication dot. It's just 4x squared. There's nothing more we can do to it because we don't know the value of x. Here, our power is telling us that our base is 4x because it's all in parentheses, and this exponent is outside the parentheses saying, this is your base. So we have now identified that it's 4x times 4x because our exponent says take your base and multiply it by itself twice. So now we get to identify that we have two fours, 4 times 4, and x times x. So 4 times 4 is 16, and then x squared is in simplest form. So again, very different outcomes. 4x squared versus 16x squared. So learning moment here, watch for parentheses, and if there aren't any, recognize, and maybe even consider circling on your papers like I have done. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video, write these using exponents, and simplify if necessary. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So our first one, we're going to identify our repeated factors. We have two threes and four x's. So we're going to write that as three squared and times x to the fourth. Three squared is nine, so nine x to the fourth. Let's do the next one. We're going to identify repeated factors. So we have three m's and we have three n's. 
The order doesn't matter because we can identify them. They're all being multiplied together. And remember, multiplication is commutative, so we can change our order. So we have m to the third multiplied by n to the third. And we can take away that multiplication dot and just say that our answer is m cubed n cubed. All right, here's another one for you. Go ahead and pause the video, evaluate, and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So I hope you didn't get tricked. There are no parentheses in this power. So our base is just the three. So this is negative one times three multiplied by itself three times. So negative one times three and three times three, negative three times nine, and that's negative 27. Now on our second one, we have our base is four fifths because it's in parentheses. So that is four fifths times four fifths. We're gonna multiply the numerators, four times four is 16. Multiply the denominators, five times five is 25. And we have 16 20 fifths as our solution. Now let's talk about order of operations. They have powers. So let's review PEMDAS. P means evaluate anything in parentheses first. These are absolute value symbol, but it also operates like parentheses. You do what's inside them first before you find the absolute value. Then we're gonna do exponents. E is for exponents. M and D, multiply and divide in order from left to right. And then last but not least, you add and subtract in order from left to right. So let's look at our expression. So the first thing we're gonna identify is that we have absolute value. So we're gonna do everything inside and then do the absolute value. And now the first thing inside, we're gonna look for exponents. And we do, we have this power three to the fourth. So three to the fourth is four threes. Two threes are nine. Three times three is nine. And we do that twice. Nine times nine is 81. So three to the fourth is 81. And now we have negative 81 divided by positive 81. So our next step is to multiply and divide in order from left to right. Negative 81 divided by 81 is negative one. And our last thing to do is simplify our absolute value expression and the absolute value, any value is positive. So our answer is one. Your turn. I would like you to use order of operations to evaluate these two numerical expressions. Please pause the video now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So no parentheses in this first one. So we're going to first clear the parentheses. I mean, clear the exponent, sorry. So two to the fourth is going to be 16. So two times two is four. And then you have another set of two times two is four. Four times four is 16. So 10 subtract 16 times one half. Now we're going to multiply and divide in order from left to right. So the first thing we see here is our 16 times one half. Well, half of 16 is eight. So now I have 10 subtract eight. And our last thing to do is subtract and we get two. All right, our next one. First, we're gonna do the parentheses, which is negative four subtract seven. So we're gonna add the opposite. So negative four add negative seven gives us negative 11. Now, we're going to do our exponents. So we're gonna simplify the power five squared, and that is five times five, which is 25. Now we're gonna multiply. Two times negative 11 is negative 22. And now we can add, and 25 and negative 22 are positive three. Now let's talk about evaluating an algebraic expression. So sometimes we're given this algebraic expression and we're told what the values of x and y are, and we need to substitute these values into our expression and solve. So we are going to identify that x is negative two, so we're gonna replace this base of x with a negative two, and they're telling us that y is two thirds, so we're gonna replace the base of y with the fraction two thirds. So first, I always like to rewrite this using the values. So let's do that. So I have nine, my x becomes negative two. I always use parentheses when I substitute in for a value. x is negative two with an exponent of two, 
and y, that base, was 2 thirds, again with an exponent of 2. So to simplify this, we're going to do exponents first. So negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, and 2 thirds times 2 thirds is 4 ninths. So let's rewrite that. 9 times 4 times 4 ninths. Now I can see, I can simplify here, because this is going to be 9 divided by 9, which is 1. So I'm left with 4 times 4, which is 16. Now it's your turn. I would like you to simplify and evaluate each of these expressions given these numerical values. Go ahead and pause the video now and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So I'm going to rewrite these using our values when x is negative 2 and I have y being 2 thirds. This first expression only needs the negative 2. So we're going to replace this base of x with negative 2 and I'm going to use parentheses to do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is evaluate the power. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is positive 4. So 6 subtract 4. Now we subtract, and 6 subtract 4 is 2. All right, the next one, we're going to replace x with negative 2 and y with 2 thirds. So that gives us negative 2 plus 81 y, our base, using our parentheses, is 2 thirds squared. So the first thing we want to do is our exponents. 2 thirds squared is 2 thirds times 2 thirds, which is 4 ninths. And then over here, to evaluate this, we can do 81 divided by 9 first. That's easier than doing 81 times 4 and then divided by 9. 81 divided by 9 is 9. 9 times 4 is 36. So 9 times 4 and 36 and 36 and negative 2 are 34. Thanks for joining me today as we learned and discovered powers versus exponents and how to evaluate and understand bases. I hope your big takeaway today is to pay attention for parentheses. Stay tuned and come back to learn about the product of powers property in our next video in the playlist. Thanks for joining me here at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day and come back soon.